And also remember, don't believe in what I'm saying in this video. This video is all for entertainment purposes. Is in fact true. And I think what is troubling about wow. that statement from the mm -hmm. DI is that the Integrity Commission report actually stated that other than what we're finding out about the bond, there was no investigation of Public Jamaica Foundation per se. And I find that very troubling. I believe that that investigation should have occurred with yeah, Public Jamaica. They, they, if you have a mix up, they believe what's up. If you have a mix up between the statements from that entity and 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 and, and the prime minister janet how you doing love if you have, have this conflict why then aren't you not investigating the entity and you're investigating him both of them should be investigated you cannot leave any stones and turn in the commands to follow the money we got our brother action in the middle what's going on bro Y'all don't tell me that that's not a that's a horn that's not a bell now. I'm late, bro, at work. Like, no, nah, I'm gonna go live again. I'm gonna go live again. This is the first live for today. I'm gonna go live later on. I just wanted to cover this one by itself. This needed its own attention. Make a foundation just because of that revelation. I think yes, more should have been done plan. to it's either like clear Mr. Honus completely or to indict him fully. Yeah. Oh man, talk about it. Clear him completely or indict him fully. There should have never been a hole. Let's pass this on to our next entity to investigate. No. Take the man to court. So you're arguing that the integrity... Rose McIntosh, big up. The commission should have gone into positive foundation to look at the, uh, what is really happening in there. Yeah. That's what I'm arguing. And I think the same thing needs to be done for Nigel Clark as well. Even though he's going to be leaving, I believe that he also... They still need to investigate him. And his foundation yes. and the financial going through needs to be looked at. Oh, the audio is on double speed. Too fast for no? All right. Cut it down back. So you're saying between 2018 to... Oh, this Joanne. Blessings to you, um, Joanne Jackson. Big up. 2023 approximately about 90 plus million went through Nigel Clark's um, Growth and Opportunity Trust. And mm -hmm. during that time, approximately 80 plus million has been used. And there is no definitive as to say how this money has been spent. And what's even more troubling is that if you look at the paperwork, it says that this foundation, Nigel Clark's own, is supposed to be for the benefit of his Northwest St. Andrew um, constituency. But yet when I checked with the councillors in yeah. that constituency as Listen. to whether they had ever heard about growth and opportunity trust and say the two of them that did answer me and one declined to come in but the two of them that did answer me so said no they didn't hear about that foundation before one of them said they knew that manager clark had had a foundation right but they mm -hmm. don't know that they had used money from that foundation for the benefit of the constituents you know if the councillors don't know i hey! think that is a problem and that is why yes, i'm yes, saying yes. and i being people this is very important you know according to zara burks investigation the non-profit organization that the minister of finance nigel clark has the purpose of that organization is listed to benefit his constituency now he made 91 million dollars in between approximately 91 million dollars in between 2018 and 2023 so she went and asked mps within that constituency if they had any knowledge about this organization and whether or not they have received funding from the organization to do what the organization said it would do two of the counselors answered they didn't know about it and another one declined to answer according to zara burton's report Anna means says so Mighty God. Embarrassing. <laughs> he needs some milk. Mm, this don't look good. This don't look good. None at all. Look at Andre face. Andre confused. Andre. Andre's like, what? You can't see us, man. There's no way. There's no way. This is ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. <clears throat> You know, if the councillors don't know, I hey! think that is a problem. And that is why yes, I'm saying, yes, yes. and I'm being very serious about it, that yes, the yes. foundation needs to be investigated mm -hmm. much more thoroughly than what I'm picking up, mm -hmm. which is nothing. nothing Sarah, right. you say you're speaking to the councillors, and they're saying that there is nothing that they have recalled 
using monies from the trust to do any form of constituency work mighty god right they're saying that like in one case they said they got like a bag of um maybe a um bag of rice or <laughs> refreshments or things like that um but they don't know whether it came from the foundation or if it's a situation where it came from the cdf fund which is the constituency development fund that all the different mps get to put to work in their constituency mm -hmm. yeah so he's saying he he can't tell me that he got the money from the foundation uh, not the money the goods from the, the goods foundation from the or from the CDF. CDF. Yeah. Right, but in terms of the, the name, growth and opportunity trust, that was not something that the two of them represented. So that's a problem, Andre. That's a problem. Very much so. No, so Zara. Zara. Why not want to cut And that was different. based on my reporting um, perusal of Nigel Kirk's financials that were filed, the, the, the financials for growth and opportunity trust that were filed. And he's no longer a uh, director, I should say, of this organization, uh -huh. Growth and Opportunity Trust. He came off as a director. And he came off as a director, I think it was in 020. But off note, off note, right, is that when he was on a stage, so remember now, he supposedly ceased being a director in February of 2020. But in April of 2020, he referred to the foundation as his foundation, right? Mm -hmm. and so the, person, the only person that's left on that organization. Hold on there. Joan Jackson said, me a born Jamaican living in um, Britain. Me upset a beer. Them people a foundation for Jamaica because their next door neighbors was not allowed to come out of them yard and give them food and they were wow they were unalive they were deleted sheesh damn wow Pat W says she patiently waited you know you see how the situation pan out because and Jonas must not get away with this and we need answers very much so. The director, right, is a lady who, when I Google that name, is a lady who is a senior analyst in the office of the financial minister, which is Nigel. I don't want to miss this part, you know. I don't want to miss this part. Although Nigel Clark is no longer the director of the company, yeah. of the, um, um, the, the, the non-profit organization, the charity. You know who is the who is the standing director? Somebody that works in Nigel Clark office. They work together very closely. Ladies and gentlemen, only not see the bang around. Them have to go investigate Nigel Clark if they're not investigating already, you know. Cause something not right in you know, my wisdom warriors. Something not right, my wisdom warriors. Something is not right. Something not right. Think about them. Think about that. Right? So he, he can be like a shadow manager, right? Allegedly. The person that he works with um, intimately in his office is the director of the non-profit. Then we've got to investigate that person that you know. A whole heap of people are going to get implicated in this investigation, you know. Rose McIntosh, after I graduate from this school, I'm going into politics. <laughs> hey, you know the easy arm and about this school business. <laughs> At the Ministry yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. So, yes, yeah, so when you googled who remains, right? This V Max, and maybe everything else was will to his dog. You know, so i done with V Mac. V Mac got jokes. Oh my god, V Mac got jokes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy, let me rewind this. No, that organization, sorry. as a director, right, is a lady who, when I google that name, is a lady who is a senior analyst in the office of the financial minister, yes. which is Nigel Clark at the Ministry yes, of Finance. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, so when you googled who remains on it, it's somebody mm -hmm. in the Minister of Finance's office. Mm -hmm. Not just Ministry of Finance, but the Minister of Finance's office working as wow. a senior analyst. So senior, they work together. A senior analyst in the minister, in the minister's office. Not just the Ministry of Finance, no. In his specific office she work a senior analyst they work together what can go so Ernest Robinson what can go so from my research no no I, I want you to know all this is all alleged all of this is allegedly 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 all right I'm going to just let y'all know from now, all right? Zara, you're saying a senior analyst mm -hmm. in the Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. 
Working closely with Nigel Clark. Mm -hmm. My wife laughed when she saw me use. Come on, Ads. Is the only one remaining on that trust. Exactly, Evelyn. Not my word. <laughs> Not my word, Betty Boo. Not my word. No, sir. <laughs> hey, this a, Jamaica. This a full bangarang. Me not tell no lie. This a full bangarang. Andre and cover another no. piece of bangarang. No, sir. Mm -mm. This serious. You serious, bad brother? What can go so? so? What can go so? What can go so? Eh? Go and we all applaud him. And you ask yourself the question. All right. Not taking away his skill set. You know, not taking his away his academic record. But how is he allowed to get away with this? And this is a tax-exempt charity? A tax-exempt charity? Wow. So right, and what is interesting? Let me let me say one more thing about this. Right, I wish you could see the um the graphic on the screen that I'm looking at from my. Story. All right, you know you have to come back. No, we can't do this here tonight. You know, I'm making you know you have to come back either tomorrow night or the night after. This is too. This yeah, is man, too deep. Too, it, too, it, too. it is very deep because what Ooh. I want to mention to you is that remember in 2018 it was the year that Nigel Clark was actually elected to be the MP of Northwest St. Andrew for the first time but then he also ran in 020 and then you know he was re-elected so mm -hmm. I want to point out to you right that if you look at in 018 27.8 million dollars right was raised in that year and then mm -hmm. if you look at 019 Though the whatever was raised went down to 8.2 million, right? Mm. And then in 020, the revenue spiked again to 35.3 million. And then after the election, it goes down to only 1.6 million, right? So you ask yourself the question is this growth and opportunity trust being used for election purposes when you have mm. these spikes in election year and then mm. going down after the election substantially? You Yo, know, what is that is a very good question. That is, and that is a listen. That question is, in my opinion, is a rhetorical question too. Because the disparity between the increase in revenue is too big. How do you go from 35 million in an election year in terms of revenue um, reached with the nonprofit, right? To a, a, a year when there's no election, just over 1 million. Come on, man. Come on, man. A corrupt government Come on, cannot man. liberate the people. Come on, man. Yes, if the head and of the stream yes, is yes. corrupt, on, the entire river will be also. Come on, man. Yeah, what is the significance? But he's entering the race. 27.8 million. In right. Ohio. Remember, I told you it was 90 something million over yes. the period. Right. Yes. And then it it's down. spikes mm. in election years. So in 2018, when there is a by-election, it's almost 30 million. Mm -hmm. And then in 2020, when we have the COVID election, it spike again to 35.3. Yeah. And then it go down to 1.6 in 2020. Wow. 2021. 2021. Right. And wow. then it's 3 million in 2022. And then it spiked a little bit again to 15.3 million in 2023. Right. And if you look at the spending as well, this is another thing that's a little bit suspect. Mm -hmm. If you look at the spending again in 2018, it spiked to 15.5 million in all hey my jamaican sister living in the states what's going on step what's going on <laughs> how you doing love how you doing good to see you in the building <laughs> salute to you when there was no election expenses go down to 10.3 million then in election year 020 it goes right up again to 30.5 million right so from also oh, not only does the the money that is being allocated or donated to the to the to the to the to the, to the uh non-profit organization going up in the election year the the money that is also spent in that organization is going up now nah, come on man what are we doing what are we doing <laughs> one plus one equals two she's absolutely the question she asked about whether or not these monies are being used for 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 election campaign to me in my opinion the the, the question answers itself i'm like what, what are we even talking about 
There is a clear pattern. You have 10.3 million in election year 020, it goes up to 30.5 million, so three times. Wow. To triple. And then in 2021, the spending goes down to 5.8 million. Damn. No, oh. Sarah. And in Canada account to tell you how this money is spent and the councillors can't recall and brought an opportunity trust being spent in the constituency. Mm -hmm. And he says, with respect to providing you with further information, the organization is under no obligation to you to go further than the applicable laws require. In other words, you don't have to answer how the money is earned and how the money is spent for this organization, even though we as the members of the public and, the, you know, the, 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 we don't charge this organization tax, but we can't figure out how the money go with this organization. It is crazy what is going on. Crazy. Right? It is crazy that this is allowed to happen, especially when you look at the spikes in election periods for the 018 and the 020 years. Damn. Oh my God. What can go so? So, would it and I would encourage people to sign up for my newsletter because I'm telling you, you'll yeah. find out more of this information if you do, right? So I'm encouraging people to sign up. And again, it's www.18degreesnorth.tv. Hey, hey, Joanne, all the team, yeah, man. All the team. Steph, may I tell you? Pure corruption. Can't put your trust in a man, only put your trust in a God. No joke. God, a God, man. Hey. My goodness. Mm -mm. So was the POJ funding him those monies? Just asking. Rosalie. A good question I ask. Please sign up. So I want to ask you though, Zara. Wouldn't mm -hmm. the financial investigative division have the remit to investigate Nigel Clark with these? Um this trust money? This trust. Growth and opportunity trust. Wouldn't the FID in its remit, have the power to investigate Nigel Clark's trust? Well, I would think so. I would think so. But I don't know for sure. Well, oh, oh, the FID are going to investigate Nigel Clark. Is it Nigel Clark associated with the FID? I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm just asking. You know, because it's almost like when I see the Integrity Commission say that they did not go ahead and investigate Positive Jamaica Foundation, mm -hmm. but yet there's this major transaction that occurs of where supposedly Positive of Jamaica Foundation is used, money from that is used, and the DI is making a case, even though Honus disputes it, but the DI is making a case that the benefit went to Mr. Honus himself. How can you not see that as, an, as, as a need, an absolute need for an investigation to occur of Positive Jamaica Foundation? How? How, Sway? How? Make it make sense. And Growth and Opportunity Trust could be running the same situation. We don't know. Exactly. All we want to know is that our politicians are clean. So if Dr. Clark is clean, all right, let's check the box. He's clean. Right. right? But you can't tell me you have a foundation, 90 something million raised over six years, 84 million spent over the same period of time, much of this through the election period. Mm. And we're just going to say, yay congratulations and not to look at that mm -hmm. but i will tell you this mm -hmm. that the tax exempt organizations right mm -hmm. they don't they have the dcfs yes but i'm not sure to what extent the dcfs is actually taking investigations seriously of some of these organizations right i've seen where the dcfs in a previous report has said that they're investigating let us say this organization that organization da, da, da. but in terms of whether they're actually looking at Dr. Clark's Foundation Growth and Opportunity Trust, I'm not sure that they're actually looking at that. Mm. And I think that is something that should be looked at, even if the DCFS, so to say, doesn't get involved in it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, to me, needs to be looking at that. The Integrity Commission needs to be looking at that. Just like what you said, the FIB, to me, needs to be looking at that as well. Where do we go from here? Yeah, tell Zara, me. Do you want us to look? Because if we, if we open the can of worms tonight about the nil filing that is going to be a very complex one you want us to look at that part tomorrow night monday night i think zara mm -hmm. i want to remind you of something you remember this quote from the prime minister in 2020 producer can you put it up please he spoke about tax evasion i really want us to remember when he spoke there is a quote let me see if i can find it. jamaica 
not that producer national concentration of domestic resources for development program you heard that jamaica tax avoidance and evasion transfer pricing transnational crime and public corruption divert significant revenues of developing countries they also inhibit the mobilization of domestic resources for development program what's your take on that reading the report zara um i mean i'm not really sure what to make of that mm -hmm. you know i mean it's a very obvious quote i mean the fact that he could potentially have a tax liability which we don't know that's the part that we don't know we don't know if he had a tax liability because at the end of the day um it's not fully clear to me it's not you know it's not fully fully clear to me that he would have had a tax liability i think that is something that um maybe the tag would have to rule on right but let's say he didn't in fact have a tax liability then that would be what you would call hypocr hypocritical you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but you know <laughs> We all know that the government is run on taxes mm -hmm. and so our politicians who